Hi there and welcome to tutorial 6 on composite functions as they come up in the Edexcel Core 3 Maths A-Level course but should be applicable to most other Core Maths A-Level modules. Ok, as always looking at the Edexcel specification so far we've defined a function as a one-to-one -one or many-to-one -one mapping from the real numbers or a point uh, of a section of the real numbers to the real numbers um, and we've talked about the domain and range of functions and how to find it. We've also talked about the notation of functions. In this tutorial we're going to talk about com the composition of functions and students should know that fg means do g first then f. We will talk about what this means. Right, firstly composite or composition of functions. Composite means when two or more things are combined together. So a composite function uh, is when two or more functions combine to, and the result is like one function. Two functions combine and you can think of those that combination as one entire function. Now, how would this materialize? Well, imagine we had a function and here is our domain, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and our function is uh, f of x is 2x plus 1. So you double your input number, okay, and then add 1. So our output numbers would be double 1 add 1 is 3, double 2 add 1 is um, 5, double 3 add 1 is 7, etc. So our output numbers uh, for the function f would be 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. So we've got our usual function here. f applied to the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we apply a rule, our, our f rule, and we get 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Now, imagine with the output numbers, or the range of f, we now apply another function to this here. So we apply another function, say g, and let's say in this case our function is to square the numbers. So from the uh, range of f, that will now become the domain of g, and we would square those numbers and get 9, 25, 49, 81, uh, and 121. And you could think of this as one uh, function to get from 5 to 121, let's say. And how does that work? You take an x, you apply f to it, and you get f of x. And that answer, you apply g to it, so you get g of f of x. So that one function there is uh, g of f of x. Now the way we think of this is we say we take an input number x, apply f to it and you get f of x. Then apply g to that result and get g of f of x. So g of f of x means that you do f first and then g. And we need to be familiar with that. So g of f of x means do f first and then g. Right, we're going to st start straight away with an example and you can have a go at set yourself. We have some functions here, f, g and h, and they're defined over the real numbers as follows. f of x is 2x plus 1, g of x is x squared, and h of x is 1 over x. It is worth noting out for h of x to be defined as a function, x, for that case, cannot be equal to 0. And in our example, we're going to work the following out. f of g of 2. Now remember what f of g of 2 means. It says, do g of 2 first, and with that answer, put it in f. So how we're going to do this is as follows. We're going to lay out our working very neatly. We're going to firstly say, what is g of 2? Well, g of 2 would be 2 squared. And that's 4. OK, so f of g of 2 f of g of 2 must be f of 4, because g of 2 equals 4, would be f of 4. And f of 4 is 2 multiplied by 4 plus 1, which is equal to the answer 9. So f of g of 2 gives me 9. And lay out your working like this, all the equals in the line, very neatly showing your steps. Don't try and jump it and do it in 1. Now we're going to go g of f of 3. Remember, put 3 into f, work it out, that answer put into g. So start off by showing what f of 3 is. f of 3 is 2 times 3 plus 1. 
and you would get the answer 7 for that. So g of f of 3, g of f of 3, must be equal to g of 7, which is equal to 7 squared, which is 49. So state at the end, g of f of 3 must be equal to 49. Now, we're not going to put a number in here, we're going to put general x in. So, we're going to put x into f, work it out, and then the answer to that, put it in g. So firstly, what is f of x? f of x is 2x plus 1. g of f of x. Remember that means put in f of x, the answer you get, i.e. 2x plus 1, into g. So that would be uh, where you see x instead, you would put 2x plus 1 and you'd square it. And you can leave your answer like that. You could expand it out to 4x squared plus 4x plus 1, but there is no real need. Either of those is the correct answer. g of f of x is either of those two. Um, just always think when you're defining these to define a range, x could take any value here. So x would be a, any member of the real numbers for that. Okay, now f of g of x. That means put x into g, work it out, and then with that, put that into f. So let's state what g of x is. g of x is x squared. So f of g of x would be putting in x squared into f. So you get 2 x squared plus 1, which is just 2x squared plus 1. And as always, just think what x's can go in here. Well, x could take any real number again. Okay, any number goes in there and it makes sense. Right, we're going to do four more, then you're going to do a set yourself. Same functions, but this time we're going to work out f squared of x. Now, what does that mean? f squared of x means f of f of x. Okay? So you work out f of x and then you put it back into f. Now, we know that f of x is 2x plus 1. Okay, so then if you put that back into f, what would you get? So f of f of x, put 2x plus 1 in here, is 2, 2x plus 1, plus 1. And you would get for that 4x plus 2, and then plus the 1, so you get 4x plus 3. f squared of x is 4x plus 3. What values can x take? x can take any real number. Okay, number 6, g squared of x. Well, that means, remember, g of g of x. Now, g of x is x squared. So you're going to put x squared back into g, so g of g of x is uh, g of x squared, which is x squared squared, which is x to the power of 4. So g squared of x is x to the power of 4. What values can x take? x can take all values. And last two, h squared. h squared means uh, h of h of x. Okay, uh, h of x is 1 over x, so we're working at h of 1 over x. And that is equal to 1 over 1 over x. The reciprocal of 1 over x is simply x. So h squared of x is equal to x. At what values can x take here? x can take, um, should be able to take any values. One thing to note here, um, h could only take, uh, or could take all values apart from x is equal to 0. And lastly, f of g of h of x, well, firstly, what that means, what put in x to h and work out h of x, then the answer put in g, work it out, and then put all of that in f. So to start with, h of x is 1 over x. g of h of x is g of 1 over x, which is 1 over x all squared, which is 1 over x squared. Okay, so f then of g of h of x must be equal to f of 1 over x squared, 
which it means uh, which is simply 2 1 over x squared plus 1 uh, which will be 2 over x squared plus 1 so f of g of h of x is equal to that now do notice just from this bit of work we've done there hopefully that all made sense remember here just to think about the domain uh, x is a member of the real numbers but x cannot equal zero just something to point out here when you're looking through all of this in particular in this last side a g of f uh, is not equal to f of g in general so they there's no they should not be the same they could be but they most likely are not the same so we have worked through um eight examples there i would like you to pause the video now have a go at a few yourself and then mark your work against mine take a look at these Okay, I'm going to go through these. I'm going to break them up as I go through them. So I'm going to go through um, these ones first here. So remember, uh, f of g of 2 means uh, put 2 into g, work it out, then put it into f. So g of 2 is equal to 2 squared minus 4, which is equal to 0. So f of g of 2 must be f of 0. Uh, which is equal to 4 times 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. So f of g of 2 must be 1. g of f of 1, well, remember, put 1 into f, so f of 1 is equal to 4 times 1 plus 1, which is 5. So g of f of 1 must be the same as g of 5, um, which is equal to 5 squared, minus 4, which is 25 minus 4, which is 21. So g of f of 1 must be 21. f of g of x, put x into g, and you get g of x is equal to x squared minus 4, and then put that result in f. So f of g of x must be f of x squared minus 4. So you put x squared minus 4 into f, and you get 4 x squared minus 4 plus 1. You could work that out and that would be 4x squared minus 16 plus 1 which would be minus 15. And the next one g of f of x, well f of x is equal to 4x plus 1. So g of f of x must be g of 4x plus 1 which must be uh, 4x plus 1 all squared minus 4 and again you could expand that if you wanted no real need but if you wanted to that would be 16x squared plus 8x minus 3 but real no real need to expand from there okay and going through the answers to the last four g of h of x well h of x is equal to 1 over x so g of h of x must be g of 1 over x, which must be equal to 1 over x squared minus 4. Remember, just think when is this valid? Well, x is a member of the reals, but x cannot be equal to 0. h of g of x, well, g of x is x squared minus 4. h of g of x must be h of x squared minus 4 which must be 1 over x squared minus 4. So h of g of x is equal to that. Um, what could x be in this case? Well, x could be a real number, but there are two things x couldn't be. x couldn't be plus or minus 2, because if it were, the bottom would be 0, and you can't divide by 0. f of h of x, well, h of x is equal to 1 over x, so f of h of x is equal to f of 1 over x, which would be equal to 4 over x plus 1. And f squared of x, well f squared of x means f of f of x, um, and that would be f of 4x plus 1, 
because fx is 4x plus 1, which would be 4, 4x plus 1 plus 1, and you could expand that out and get 16x plus 5. So f squared of x is equal to 16x plus 5. And there we are. What values could x take here? x could take any value. We should have gone back here and said what x could take in part 7. x could take any value. Apart from x could not be 0 as this thing would be undefined 4 over x. And there we are with uh, composite functions. So that is effectively it with composite functions. I'd advise you to look over chapter 2, page 20 to 22 and look at the examples, work through them and then do exercise 2D every single question. Then look for my next video which will be on inverse functions. Thank you for watching and I hope you found the following video useful in your work on Core 4 for edXL.